some ideal, your country, anything, so much that you would kill for. Tell me that you killed for freedom and the dignity of man. Just give me anything that's acceptable. What? What? Just tell me something that's acceptable. I can't. Thirty of them in this camp. Africans with their strong sense of family loyalty are ready to acknowledge the most distant ties of kinship. Yet no relative of these sad children has come forward to claim them. All are dead or scattered in the chaos of war. The children have only each other to leave. Have any of them been able to go back to their farms yet at all? Since they came back, yes, they have been able to go back to their farms. But they find that the farms have been overgrown and um, much of the crops lost. So it is difficult still to live. They're relying on you to a considerable extension for food. In fact, they are. Whatever food we can get in from any quarters, that's all that they have to eat. And uh, we need a lot of charity. What about the people who are dying here? The rate of death has sharply increased uh, from two a week in this camp to seven since the operations in Ecolipini. Seven a day now. Are you worried about disease in this camp? Oh, very, very much so, because we are suffering here from dysentery and malaria, malnutrition, and a Don't shortage of nurses and doctors. We have no doctor here for the last six weeks. Any chance of getting people into hospital? There's no hospital around. If we had a hospital that we would like it very much. What drugs do you need most? Uh, malaria drugs and dysentery, drugs for dysentery, malnutrition, vitamin pills if we could get them, and uh, vaccinations because well, there is danger of smallpox if we could get it for the to vaccinate the people. Very, very grateful. What situation do you think would arrive? Or box did start here, what would happen? I'm afraid everybody would be wiped out. That is as easy as that. This tin of tuna fish actually came from Caritas International. It could equally well have come from the Red Cross, the World Council of Churches, or Oxfam. They've all contributed relief supplies to this camp.
Father Dutton has voted. Father Dutton's number, please. Number seven. Number seven, thank you. Your name and address, please. Six for all, like eight, nine, eight, old Cadillac. Please sign. Give Mr. Froelich a Democratic ballot. Mrs. Rorick has voted. This is Rorick's number, please. Number nine. Number. Your name and address, nine. please. Nine. John Cunningham, 6942 June Street. Give Mr. Cunningham a Republican ballot, please. Thank you. Oh, good. How are you? Fine. Since when do you need music? I hate to be helped by music. I'm my own music. I'm looking for the election return. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. Are you voting? Say, I already have. Who'd you vote for? Better be Ellis. Why? You voted for Gibbons. Oh, that's terrible. You should have voted for Ellis. Why? He's vital. He's Kennedy young and beautiful. He's new. Besides, Gibbons is an old crow. Oh, hey, that's not so. He's a good man. He has knowledge and experience. And an accurate understanding of the way things should be in this country. He thinks things out very clearly. I like a man like that. Ah, uh, that's terrible. You should have voted for Ellis. You know, you really are old-fashioned. Nobody uses beds anymore. Can I sleep here afterwards? Did you ever let any of us sleep here afterwards? Even late at night? Why? Why? I like staying awake with people, but I like sleeping alone. Oh, sorry. I always forget you don't like to kiss. Hey, listen, what do you hear this? Have you ever been with a woman you haven't paid for? Uh, shh, no. Why? You know, I have a friend of mine who's been in this business about 400 years. I think she made it with Washington at Valley Forge. <laughs> and she knows everything about everything, especially this. And you know what she said? She said making love is 90% control and 10% emotion. And she only found one like that in her life. Wait till I tell her I've got a trick in my book who's 97% control and 3% emotion. Listen, you want me to say I love you? I never know whether you want me to say I love you or not. You know, that when I was 22 years old, I gave up the business of knowing anything for the business of guessing. I am a champion guesser. I guess, for example, the kind of religions that might be practicable from an organizational point of view in the year, let's say, of 2,300. Oh, look at me, Jonathan, look at me. What a waste. But. That wouldn't take me too seriously. You know, every time I have a birthday, I always do an obituary about myself. <laughs> Look, here is a lecture that I'm giving today to an elite group of corporate wizards. It's on the expected vehicular traffic between Boston and Washington, D.C. in the year 2050. Why? Well, it has to do with road builders. Supposedly, the knowers don't know, so the guessers guess. I've, uh, I got a job for you, a new job, but I don't think you'll want it. Why? It's a hard contract. What's hard about it? It has to be accomplished within a month. 
And I know that you don't like time limits, but the money is substantially more than you and I have ever received before. Well, what is it? It's three men, two of them in Europe. One of them is in Torremolino, Spain, right on the Mediterranean. And the second is in Brussels, and the third they haven't located yet. Well, uh, do they know? Are they hiding? Of course not. They have no inkling whatsoever. Well, I don't like hard contracts, but uh, I've never been in Europe. I'd like to see Europe. When will you know about the third one? Well, you call me from Brussels when you're done. I'll be able to tell you by then. Oh, Jonathan, I wish I was going with you. Torremolinos. I haven't been to Spain in 30 years. You know, I used to practically live in the Prado just before it was Madrid's turn to go under. I sometimes think that when Madrid went under, so did I. I stopped believing in anything, and I started betting on everything. You know, my heroic struggle was over, and after that, it's, it's all for spite. And then you are 60. Did you ever... Get a ticket for speeding? <laughs> Did you ever get a parking ticket? No. Now, I know you so well that I could write a biography of you in depth by simply asking questions to which the answer would be no. That's a very publishable idea. It would not only be a biography, it would be a history as well. I call it... I call it... The history of murder from Cain to Cunningham. And the basic thesis would be that it gets more and more careful. So now it's so careful, there seems to be practically no crime involved anymore. over there in the blue suit. Yes. What about him? He's very attractive. Very. He's an American. He just arrived. Typical tourist. Doesn't speak Spanish. He goes to the concierge and asks to buy a woman. Maybe <laughs> buy one. Oh. Oh, I see what you mean. Buy one. <laughs> Poor dear man. He'll never find what he wants in Florida. He knows it's all for free. You'll have to go to Madrid. Mm, probably. He offered 50 dollars. Fifty dollars, how generous. You know, Adrian, every so often, I get the most delicious obsession to shout at the top of my voice, help. Then, good Lord, why don't you? Uh, right now? Yes, of course, I might even join you. No, it's too silly. Uh, even with Alexei's cigarettes, I'm not high enough. Alexei, you're not high enough either. Maybe you poor, misunderstood Nazis need a few gas chambers to really turn you on. Sheila. Oh. Oh, Alexi, you're a good, sweet man. Kiss me. Do you forgive me? Oh, yes. Heil Hitler! For God's sake, Sheila! Help! Que pasa, Mrs. Mitkat? Oh, Juan Carlos, I'm terribly sorry. I'm always getting my fairy tales mixed up. I meant to cry wolf! <laughs> well, good night, everybody. I'll see you in the morning. Oh. 
Where will she go now? Trouble is, she's one of those people that can never sleep more than three hours a night. And all the years I've known her, that's been the case. She left her first husband because he slept too much. Don't miss her. Used to be our ambassador to the Hague. Lovely man. What of the other husband? Charlie Thompson. Oh, he was a very quiet, very skillful surgeon. He became, with Sheila's help, one of our most successful and most distinguished surgeons, not only in England, but on the continent as well. She's always been, in all the years I've known her, most extraordinarily kind, with an, with an almost obsessive need to help all the men she's ever been with. Or punish them. Um, uh, tomato juice, please. Your coach is outside, ladies and gentlemen. Would you take your seats, please? And on behalf of Sky Tours, may I welcome you aboard our excursion to Lehas. The journey will take us approximately 45 minutes, and we shall be driving along the main coastal road, which leads down to Gibraltar. A short distance along this road, we shall be... Excuse me. May I have the right? Yes, in the back. Here we have a further view of Mehas, originally a Moorish town, uh, reconquered in 1483 by the Catholic kings Ferdinand and Isabella. And here the chapel of the Virgen de la Pena, who is the patron saint of Mehas. Fernando told me your name, the concierge. You asked him to find a woman for you? Actually, I'm on vacation. I promised myself a long rest, but I'm running a bit short. My friends down there don't know that I work sometimes. I've been living kind of a secret these past few months. Well, how does Fernando know? He used to work in a London hotel. Actually, I'd get more in London or even in Madrid, but would 6,000 pesetas be too much? 6,000 pesetas? How much is that? About a hundred dollars. What's your name? Sheila. I'm in room 615.
I'd like to get done today. Please? I can run an airplane. Oh, yes, I think so. Uh, would you, um... Would you like me to draw the blinds? Well, sure, anything you like. No, no, no. You don't need to do any tricks. I'm an American. Say, listen, I've got a lot to do today, and I think you better get dressed. like that before. First time I've been in Europe. They're really different here, aren't they? I mean, like, people are different here. Can't you hear me in there? You, you dead in there or something? Alive. <laughs> oh, Marvin. Oh, Sheila, Yard, you're a genius. You know that he didn't even kiss me. Not once. No. Oh, how marvelous. I'll never spend that 6,000 pesetas as long as I live. No, of course not, good Lord. What decent woman in her right mind would? Now, why ever would a man like that need that kind of a woman? When he could so easily attain to just about any one of us, so to speak. He knows their price. He doesn't know ours. And he's quite right, of course.
I guessed it. I just had a feeling. I guessed it. No, it can't be. It's just not possible. After all these years, two husbands, men, and several psychiatrists. Sheila, look at me. Really is a miracle. Good afternoon, Mr. Cunningham. Hey, you look happy. Oh, yes, yes. I may be going off to Tangier tomorrow evening. Tangier? Hmm. How far is that? It's in Africa, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Why don't you come along? I'm sure the others wouldn't mind. Oh, no, thanks. Oh, did you find out about leasing a plane? Yes. Well, then you could fly to Tangier. It's um, less than an hour away by plane. Might prove a lovely flight. That's an idea, isn't it? Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I, I don't know. Well, if you don't, will you still be here when I come back? It won't be more than two days. Well, I don't know. I'm kind of moving around a lot. I don't have all the time in the world, you know, so... Uh... Yes, that's true. You really ought to see everything you can while you're here. Yeah, say, uh... Can I, uh... Listen, you need money, right? Oh, yeah. Well, the scene you make is a little too much for me. Understand that... 6,000 pesetas is a lot of money for a man like me, and uh, I was wondering that if I'm still here when you get back, if we couldn't make some kind of an arrangement between us. You know? It's old. I've just taken a cut in salary. What? Alexei? Uh -huh. You have all sorts of um, interests and power, haven't you? I want you to have a man followed. Wherever he goes, if he checks out of the hotel, that is a small enough request. Yes, but you don't understand what I mean. I mean, not just in Toro Molinos, I mean anywhere in the world. It should be done. May I ask why? No, you may not. Alexei, do you like that? Hmm. Then I shall buy it for you. I really think you should have it, Alexei. It's a Saint Teresa. One of Spain's most heroic and martyred saints. They say she was a Jewess. Did you know that? It's very well known and not so odd as it may seem. They say my mother was a saint and she was a Jewess, too. Did you know that?
Paul. Yes, I can see that. Whatever made you decide to come to Tangiers? Sheila said you probably wouldn't. But I'm delighted I found you. I'm her friend. Yes, I know. These are my two guides. Alexei insists that I take them about with me wherever I roam in these mysterious streets. Makes me feel terribly important. I'm Adrian Bedford. How do you do? I'm John Cunningham. How marvelous for you. You may be part of a miracle. Do you realize that? Part of a miracle? Yes, uh, half of one, to be precise. Well, I've never been half a miracle before. Well, you couldn't have known you were, because she lied to you. She lied to you about what she is. Does. She's not. She doesn't. She's a very remarkable woman, and she lied to you. Oh, I wasn't going to tell you right off. I was going to make believe I was a madam. It all started as a joke. That's all. Miracles start as jokes. But you'll never get away now. You're being followed. I mean it. I'm serious. She's having you followed. And if she follows you, so do I. And then there's Alexi and Maurice and Lord knows how many others. You may not realize it, Mr. Cunningham, but you've inherited an entire family. Now, first there's Maurice, my beautiful Maurice. He's Algerian, or was, lost everything, too, in the war. His property, his wife, all that's left is his cane, and he comes with us to places. I'm not getting any younger. These little loves can sober me up faster than chemicals. Their hands are the most skilled in Africa. Oh, sir. Oh. And then there's Alexei. Little Alexei. His name's not really Alexei, he's German. There's lots of stores in Europe and Africa, in America too. To get some money out of Germany after the war. He's responsible for the death of 30,000 gypsies in those concentration camps, they say. But I don't believe. Well, couldn't. The Lelexi, so sweet and thoughtful. Anyway, they found him guilty and he spent six years in jail after waiting to go on trial for four years, ten years long. Now, all he wants to do is to be forgiven. And we do. We English forgive our enemies almost simultaneously with a crime. Now, isn't that marvelous? The things they say to you. Now, they are eloquent men with eloquent words for every race, every creed, every culture, every minority. But is there no one, no one who has a good word for us rich white Protestants? Sheila? Hi. Mr. Cunningham is here. What a lovely dress. Wherever did you get it? funny for a hustler. Oh, we all talk funny like that in Europe. All of us hustlers. Mm -hmm. Well, I flew in from Tourmalinus this morning. I met Adrian in a little square down the street. And uh, we had a nice long walk. And we talked.
Do you have 6,000 pesetas, Mr. Cunningham? Not a penny less. Four. Six. Three. I'll drive. Uh -huh. I'll drive. Sleep for a while. Mm hmm. I snore. <laughs> you didn't say, Did I snore? You said, Do I snore? Isn't that funny? Quite raucously, as a matter of fact. No. Do I? But you didn't talk in your sleep. Uh. I wish you had. Why? Because it's another way of following you. Must your clothes, haven't I? Oh. You don't know how to kiss. <laughs> you must be one of the great lovers of the world, and you don't know how to kiss. <laughs> no, no, Isn't yeah, that interesting? I'll... <laughs> I own a bowling alley. A bowling alley? A secret bowling alley. Because you're in something secret, I know that. I bet you work for a big American firm and you carry immense responsibility. There are foreign investors invading Spain right now and trying to keep it a secret. Alexi told me. Are you going to buy Spain, Mr. Cunningham? Listen, if I decide to buy Spain in secret, you'll be the first to know I promise. Why are you so afraid to let me know you? I've never met a man like you. You don't talk about yourself. You don't talk at all unless I beg you. Sing me a lullaby. Sing me to sleep. I don't know any lullabies. Oh, well, sing me a song. Any song you know. It's soft, huh? I don't know any songs. Yes, I do. I know a song, a Marine Hymn. That what you were, a Marine? Mm-hmm. Is that where you learned how to fly? You were a pilot? Yep, a long time ago. Hmm. Well, sing me the song. 
softly. Let's see. From the <clears throat> from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we will fight our country's battle on the land as on the sea. Do you believe in God, Mr. Cunningham? Sure, I believe in God. Don't you? Right now, I believe in him. It lasts for seconds at a time, that belief. Then I'm positive he doesn't exist. And that lasts for several seconds. And then it may be. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't exist. And it changes like that. Every few seconds. Each hour of every day. I know all about God. My father was in that business. You change your mind a lot. Oh, it's not me. It's him. He moves around and about constantly. Who does? God. He didn't used to be that way. The world was tiny. and There were just a few people. But now, with all these people and all those planets, it keeps him jumping, don't you see? It does help to explain him and his creatures and all the contradictions, doesn't it? Oh. Oh, do you feel that wind? Mm. Oh. He's gone again. Always going off. Oh, well. Other planets, you know, worse troubles. Vamos, por favor. It's like a little house, like a toy. You're a toy. <laughs> well, what's the matter? Whoever it is that put that spring in you and wound you up, he knew what he was doing. Probably the only one in the whole history of this continent that wasn't an amateur. Yeah, but what's happening? What did I do? Well, all I wanted to do was buy you something. I just... Yeah. Anything. I feel wonderful, and when I feel wonderful, I love to buy things. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, maybe we could, um, at least exchange gifts. It's not, I don't think, Presumptuous for people who've been as intimate as we? I don't think.
It's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. He'll be delighted. Do you realize I shouldn't even be talking to you? I'm apologizing. Look at me. No. Stop what you're doing and let me have a look at your face. Is he still a ball? No. <laughs> I'll go get him and we'll all go for a drive. He's the worst driver in the world. <laughs> He's checked out. Cunningham's gone. He's gone. Yeah, monsieur. Well, you speak English? I speak English. You will drink beer? Ah. Je vous ai dit, zal de dezelfde liedje. Als je wordt behoorlijk Nederlands praten, denk ik wel of je misdaad begaan hebt. La moindre des choses, madame, c'est de rester poli. Ça suffit, oui. Poli. Bruxelles will have trouble soon. It will not be stopped so easily as this. Trouble? Yes. What language is to be taught in the schools? What language will be spoken in government? French or Flemish? Flemish. They are noisy. But if they do not quiet, we who speak French will quiet them. Oh, madame. Thank <laughs> you. 
Jonathan, I can hardly hear you. You don't sound good. What's the matter? I'm just not working right, Ramsey. I've got good news for you. Listen, as soon as you finish in Brussels, you go on to Madrid, because they've located our number three. And Jonathan, I have to tell you about this fellow, even though I know your strict rule about not knowing anything. That's important, see? Can you hear me? Yes. Now, this fellow used to be you. He was numero uno about uh, 20 years ago, when competition was a lot tougher than it is now. Yeah, but he's been retired for a long, long time. Listen, I sent, I sent his photo in care of General Delivery American Express. I don't like it, Ramsey. I don't like Brussels. I don't like these countries over here. It's a continent for amateurs. It's an amateur continent. What? Listen, I can't hear a word. Jonathan, how goes it with the women in Brussels? I hear it's renowned for your type. Listen, ever since I've been on this amateur continent, I've been with one woman. An amateur. What? What did you say? I said something's wrong. Did you say one woman? Jonathan? Bonsoir, monsieur. Vous voulez voir une fille? Yes. Je vous en prie. You should not sit there like that. 
Il gatti qui scom. Come. We try again. Why should you be so distressed? This happens to many men. Vino tinto, por favor. Gracias. Delicious. Estupendo. Invito a todo para una copa, ¿eh? Gracias, señorita. Muchas gracias. A vuestra salud. A la suya. I told you that I would, Sheila. I promised, and I keep my promises. We found him. He's in Brussels. Hum! This is the hotel he's at. They're following his every move. They're professionals. All oh, he'll not get lost again. You pleased? Yes, I'm pleased. Oh, God, how exciting. Do we all go to Brussels now and more or less pop in on him? Alexi, do you love me? With my entire self. Would you like to marry me? Well, do I have to ask that question a second time? No, no, no. Yes. Well, then ask me now. Will you be mine in marriage? Yes. Liebling. Just don't ever speak that cannibal tongue in my presence again. Promise me you will never speak German in front of me again. I promise you, never again. You will become less and less a kraut and more and more a human being. 
No, you say nothing matters but love, Adrian. Look at him. He loves. He can love. <laughs> Look at him, Adrian. Isn't it absurd? He may have begotten his wealth from human teeth, and he loves. Sheila, I will not put up with this. I absolutely will not. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Really, Adrian, forgive me. Do, do you forgive me, Alexei? There is nothing you can say or do that I do not forgive automatically. You keep at it. People keep at it. It happened almost 25 years ago. Hmm. Yes, that's true. That's true. And you love me, and I shall be your wife, and I'm sorry to be such a pest. Alexei, do you have something for us that we can take? Some, something strong, those pills or cakes from Tangiers? Something very strong that will make us feel free and gay and eloquent. Something I've never had before. But this is all nonsense. Please don't believe her, Alexei. Believe me. Believe in me, for I am the resurrection. I believe in you, my dear. I know what you're saying. Then I am yours, Alexei. More than I've ever been anyone's. Because you believe in me, and that's all that matters. But watch out for the wind, Alexei. <laughs> It's Brussels. Tell him I'm getting married. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll tell him myself. Hello. 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 Hello, hello. Hello. You bastard, answer me. I know you're there. Hello. Why did you call me? or groan or something to let me know you're there, that I'm not crying into the thin air as usual. Cunningham! Well, tell me where you want me. Where are you? I'll come there immediately. I'll walk if you like. I'm going to Madrid tomorrow. May God have mercy on your soul. To say the least.
and they each had two children. And every 25 years, a generation, each child had two children. Do you know how many children there'd be in a thousand years? How many? 512 billion. 512 billion? Billion? No, that's impossible. No, that's impossible. Are you sure? Yeah. A generation is 25 years. And there are four generations in a century. That means there are 40 generations in a thousand years, right? I suppose so. Oh, that means we have to go 40 times. Now, what? Two. 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1,024. I'll eliminate the 24. Makes it easier to count. 2,000, 4,000, 8,000, 16,000, 32,000, 64,000, 128,000, 256,000, 512,000, 1,024,000. We'll get to 24,000. 2 million, 4 million, 8 million, 16 million, 32 million, 64 million, 128 million, 256 million, 512 million, 1 billion, 24 billion, 24, 2 billion, 4 billion, 8 billion, 16 billion, 32 billion, 64 billion, 128 billion, 256 billion, 512 billion. No, wait, it's actually, it's actually more. It's 1 trillion, 24 million billion. And it'd be all on this planet. On other planet, maybe. And they'd all walk past each other. They'd never know. They'd be strangers. Now tell me, why do they escalate the bombing? Oh, I just simply don't understand. Well, it's a misunderstanding of some sort, probably. Maurice, now, don't start with your probabilities. Alexei, forbid him to drown me in his French probabilities. I forbid you, Maurice. How do you do? Oh, I hate to think. It must be ten years. Ten years? Oh, it's been much longer. No, Michael and I have been here ten years. We have a ranch just a little way out of Madrid. We met in London, just previous to our coming here. Don't you remember? And you've been in Madrid for ten years? However, did you manage that? Oh, it's quite pleasant, really. Michael and I adore it. We have the grandchildren off for the time. Hello! Be careful, child. You needn't worry, Adrian. You don't look a day older. <laughs> you remember my husband? Yes, of course. Adrian. Adrian Bedford. Oh, but that's extraordinary. We actually only met once, and that was ten years ago. <laughs> he has a fantastic memory. Yes, a fantastic memory. Oh, this is uh, Monsignor El Alba. Oh, this is Maurice Legrand and Alexei Kraft. Ah! Oh! Oh! Oh, no, no, I, I shouldn't be talking to you. <laughs> running away from home like this. This is Sheila Metcalf, and this is John Cunningham. Monsignor Alvera, Mr. and Mrs. Kraft. A surprise for you. Here, what, what is this? Is my birthday? Yes. Yeah. Open it. I think you'll like it. It's <laughs> quite unusual. I got it in Tangiers, just couldn't resist it. What? Uh... It's the goddess for miracles and love. <laughs> I would have given it to you at the Peasant's Father, but you disappeared. Oh. Have you been at the Peasant's Father in Coromelinos? Yes. yes, we have been there for one month. 
Did you know Mr. Bartell, who was staying there? He was a very old friend, a very dear friend of Michael's. He suddenly disappeared. Does he play cards always? Yes, that's right. Ah, oh, but I know him. Oh, is he the one that suddenly vanished into thin air? Yes. Oh, but Maurice played cards with him all the time. He was a very dear friend of my husband's. And the awful thing is that just a few days ago, we heard that another old friend who got involved in this ridiculous riot in Brussels fell or was thrown out of a window and died. All this in just one week. Jonathan. You went to Brussels, didn't you? What was that riot about? Did, did you see any part of it? Uh, no. Isn't it amazing and terrible how these things happen all at once? I mean, Michael had known both these men for over 20 years, and then suddenly... Now, 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 Edith, now, don't say any more, because it's bad luck. These things always come in threes. Did you know I was in Brussels before I called? So you go into that building, come out again. <laughs> it's 17 years. For 17 years, no one has known. Now there's uh, you and Alexi and uh, Maurice, perhaps. Why? What about Adrian? Does she know? There's all those men that Alexi hired. How many were there, do you know? What did they do? Please tell me. Do you love some ideal, your country, anything, so much that you would kill for it or die for it? Are you, are you a, a communist or a capitalist or a monarchist? What? What? Just tell me something that's acceptable. A family, huh? We don't have to wait. Thousand years, we have five hundred and twelve billion in a, a month. Tell me that you killed for freedom and the dignity of man. Just give me anything that's acceptable. I can't. I should have known. I should have guessed. No matter how I begged you, you could never tell me of your allegiance. No, no, no. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You, you still don't trust me, and I can't blame you. But, but I promise you that whatever side you're on, whatever side, I'll help you. Is it something against these fascists here? I hope so. Now, let's get dressed and go to dinner. Jonathan, you look great. It's a beautiful suit. You're staying here at the... What's the matter with you? Well, the truth is, you worried me a bit. I worried you? On the phone from Brussels. Well, you spoke about a woman, one woman. Of course, I see it was only my imagination, but... It, it... Are you staying here at this hotel, Ramsey? Yeah. Well, unless you disappear, we don't have a contract. What? I don't work with you or anybody else around me. Now, that's the contract. You're breaking it. Oh, now, be a friend. Let me stay. You know, I haven't had a vacation in a long time, and things are in a hectic back in the States. It's perfect. What? I said I'm never wrong. You're always wrong, Ramsey. Never. Sheila, this is an old friend of mine, Ramsey William. Sheila Metcalf. How do you do? I'm delighted. You forgive me for staring at you. 
But you're something out of a fantasy I had 30 years ago. Did I behave myself? <laughs> In my fantasy? In your fantasy. Well, as I remembered, you misbehaved a little. I'm sorry. Friends aren't meeting friends. That's a good sign. This is a friend of Jonathan's, Mr. Williams. This is Mrs. Bedford and Mrs. Carson. Oh, I didn't know he had any friends. It should be very interesting. I want to know everything about him, every detail. <laughs> I shall, I warn you, be relentless, Mr. Williams. And you must swear to be terribly indiscreet, give away all confidences. I swear it. Why don't we start at once? Have supper with us. I'd be delighted. You know, I haven't been in this oversized Pueblo of Madrid in over 30 years. Oh, were you in their civil war? Yes, I was. On the winning side? On the losing side. In fact, that was one of the main reasons they lost. <laughs> This is Mr. Williams, a friend of Jonathan's. He just arrived. He's having supper with us. Now, this is Alexi, and this is Maurice, and this is Mr. Carlson. I have a feeling Carlson is on to me. As soon as he saw me, before I opened my mouth, he was on to me. He was a great one. As great as you in his heyday, Jonathan. When can you complete this contract? We don't have a contract, Ramsey. Get somebody else. It's impossible. I know. You get Carlson and you can be with her. You're out. My boy. If I get you, I'm out. Ever think of that? But you were saying that they, uh, they're a miracle, those two. Could you tell me why? Oh, I couldn't possibly. Oh, that would be terribly indiscreet. Well, if you are uh, terribly indiscreet, I shall be terribly indiscreet. You're a wicked man, Ramsey Williams. You'll be punished. No, absolutely not. See, there's no such thing as punishment anymore. I know. I've studied it many years in the University. How marvelous. Punishment and crime. Are you a criminologist? Certainly not. There's no such thing as crime anymore. There's something else now. Oh, but the world is changing, Ramsey. It's not changing. It's changed. For instance, we used to make the act of murder a frightening visual experience. But it's, it's not frightening anymore. I mean, to kill a man, to see a man killed, why, we're immune. And because of uh, newspapers and television and other media, we experience on a kind of 24 hours a day basis, without our knowing it, we experience thousands of murders a day. And after thousands of days, thousands of murders per day, we become accustomed, you see, to the murder of millions. But we're a little bored and so now. Now we are psychologically prepared for the murder of tens of millions. Nagogoya. Sheila? Ramsey's been. He's been teasing me about crime and murder. Honestly, Ramsey, a man like that, a, a murderer, wouldn't he be sick? Oh, no, 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 of course not. Oh, maybe 35 years ago, he was sick, but it's no longer necessary. A lot has happened in 35 years. He's, he's not anymore. But you know as well as I do, Ramsey, that a, a murderer, a man like that, what he does, it's immoral. Of course, it's immoral. I mean, to murder for profit is immoral. It's just that in these times, it's not that immoral. Are you trying to say that it's not wrong? No, definitely not. That would be insane at worst. It would be philosophically adolescent at best. No, it is wrong. I'm simply saying that in our time, it's not that wrong. But it's ridiculous. I mean, it's just not true what he's saying, is it? 
no, Adrian, it's not true. It's just that it's not that untrue. Yeah, I heard uh, about the miracle and about them following you, and I thought, well, I wanted to see if she knew. She doesn't, but yours does, doesn't she? Yeah, maybe they all know. What? Yeah, the family. What? Yeah, maybe the whole goddamn family knows, Ramsey. Do you have? Oh, about 600. You know farms? I was brought up in farm country, tobacco mostly. Yeah. How long ago was that? Logan, I care to remember. Hey, you're just a young one. You wait till you get to be my age. I left a farm in Wisconsin during the Second World War, and I haven't been back since. Yeah, well, it was more or less the same for me, except it was the Korean conflict. You know, it's funny, isn't it? What? Well, I lost my youth in one war, you lost yours in another one. I wonder what it'd be like if we lost a war. Be the same. You know that I never read a book until I was 40 years old. That was 15 years ago. First one I read took me a year. After I got through that one, well, it's been easier. Now I don't think two weeks go by, but I don't finish another book. So you see, Cunningham, if you'd met me 15 years ago, why, everything would have been different. What happened 15 years ago? Nothing special happened. It just came to an end. I stopped. Why? Why'd you stop? I didn't plan it. It just happened. It's a day-to-day -day thing anyway, you know? You put a few hundred days together one at a time, and it's a year. And then it's two, three. After five years, well, you find yourself looking back at all the days you went through the motions of not. And then after 10 years, you don't have to look back anymore. You look ahead. And you know you couldn't go through those old motions again for anything. You're the same person, but it stopped. You don't do it anymore. Not for anything. What about her? Evelyn. Did she know? Well, I don't think so. What do you mean? Well, I mean, we've been together a long time. She might. When you stop, do you have enough money? Oh, that had nothing to do with it, nothing at all. But did you? Yes. You know, religion and, uh, and all the great books of every country. Oh, you'll have to uh, forgive me, Cunningham, but at my age, uh, with grandchildren, why, well, you think about all kinds of things. <laughs> There's one thing that none of them know. Not even your friend Ramsey. They're always going on about this fight between good and evil. 
and it's made out to be some kind of wild, rough and tumble battle to the end between two champion equals. A great fight. <laughs> I suppose they make it out that way so it'll be more interesting. But evil is a giant. Good is when evil takes a rest. Good is a rest period. There's no fight. Listen to me, Cunningham. I saw you look at that woman. I saw the woman. I can be a part of it. I can be a part of it, but it's just the first part of it. is like going through a barrier or a tunnel or, or to the other side. Once you've gone through it, you're past it. Nothing could make me go again. But there's no one in the world you couldn't force to do it. For hate, for love, for self-defense, for money, country, something somewhere. There's no one. But I'll never again, for any reason. I know that. Not even to defend yourself. No. The wife? No. Your grandchildren? No. You don't believe me. No. There's never been that long a rest period for any man who's ever lived. No one. there has. I've had 15 years. Unbelievably beautiful. Perfect. Nah. I'm an old man. I'm, I'm saying old man things. I'm sorry. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it easy for you. What I said, I, uh, I'm not sure. So you'd better be on your guard, Cunningham. Because it's, uh, it's a day-to-day -day thing, isn't it? And I've just been setting you up all this time, haven't I? You know, I used to be pretty good at it. Probably better than you. Probably, I, I'm still better than you. I see you at the house. Of course, you never know what'll happen until it actually happens. No, no, I'm sure. Once you're done with it, you're done with it. The answer is perfectly clear. Not even for them could I. I guess anybody would think I didn't love them enough. Carlson! There's never been that long a rest period in the history of the world! It's impossible!
murdered enough to get past it. What? Oh, it's an amateur continent here, Ramsey. Jesus. You just get old numero uno and get it over with. What do you want me to do? Go out and buy a gun, stick it in his face? I'm not going to do that. Neither was he. You know it. You can go out and uh, draft some kids to do it. A thousand of fine young amateurs that you can get for far less than you're paying me. Come along, you two. We're going to a gypsy wedding. You know as well as I do that if you don't, I have to get somebody who will. Yeah, I know. Not only to get him, to get you. I know. Well, what about the others? <laughs> you can marry her. Can I marry them all? You marry her, you marry them all. Alexi, I think I'd better drive. Otherwise, I don't think I'll be able to go. <laughs> I'm positive. It's nice to see a man who's positive about anything these days. Why do you want to listen to the radio on such a beautiful day? Oh, he cannot accept the fact this world may come to an end without assurance from Radio Frankfurt. The world, dear Maurice, is only just beginning. All we need to do is to look back on the things we once believed in when we were young and strong, and then everything will be all right. <laughs> you know, Adrian, with a possible exception of you, Mao Zedong, and a few Republicans in my country, nobody in the world believes that. Alexi, straining for every scrap of news. Why don't you give up these mere facts? Much too distressing. Fiction, fiction is much better for people. Evelyn, remember how voracious we used to be about novels in the old days? I stopped reading fiction when I could no longer identify with a young lover. These roads in Spain were built for 60 kilometers an hour. After that, it becomes hazardous. Mr. Cunningham, these Spanish roads are not like your American roads. You can't anticipate.
Cunningham, what's the matter with you? Speeding on a road like this is insane. There's no guarantee. It's sloppy. Very sloppy. Speeding like this. Anything can happen where not happen or half happen. This is Spain, Cunningham. Not Dixie. What happened? Why didn't you? I just went through the motion of... not. Ah, oh, you could have gotten rid of all of us. It's perfect. Everyone who knew who could connect you. But you were free. man some old-fashioned debts why don't you write me a letter when death is obsolete it's all obsolete everything is obsolete how do you think bitching got so big You know what reasons you give yourself for stopping? Just so long as you stop. You'll be making up different reasons as you go along. Three opposite ones a day. All that. It doesn't matter.
the newly married couple and make sure that they get started in the right direction, why they, as well as other couples who wish to join them, run away, you see, to be alone, to find a private place to uh, laugh and cry and make love together, because to cry and make love together is as close to God as you can get. And now what we elders are supposed to do is to get into those wagons and follow after them. Because you see, marriage, to attain grace, must always be lived as if it would be found out uh, and broken. Come on, let's make a run for it. Nothing higher than a bitch bitching. The rest is obsolete. Oh, it's a miracle. There's no such thing as a miracle. I know. That's what's so miraculous. You still want to fight? No. Want well, see if we get away with it? Yes. I'm so proud of our group. There's no one like us. We're different. Oh, yes, we're different. But we are not that different. What are you afraid of? Ramsey, what are you afraid of? Please lie to me. Okay, how's this? I work for the government, and I didn't tell you before because I'm not allowed to tell everybody. Oh, yes. It's a job I do that's more important than the lie that you me. Yes, lie to me. It's the whole world that's at stake. Oh, yes. Please lie it's to me. And the free people of the world against communism. <laughs> Adios! Goodbye! Bye! Bye! Goodbye! How much can I kill? Not even for the freedom and the dignity of man. More, more, more. more. You may not know it, but freedom and the dignity of man may become the greatest murderers of our century. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 